What is GERD or G-E-R-D and can you claim disability for it through the VA? Welcome to Battle Buddy Ben. In this episode, we're going to go over the following. What is GERD? What does Title 38 say about it? And what do you need to claim it? So let's first talk about what GERD is. GERD stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD is a condition in which the gastric acid and partially digested food flow up from the stomach into the esophagus. This results in the painful sensations that are associated with heartburn. Continuous irritation of the esophageal lining poses a risk for developing more severe complications such as esophageal cancer. Common symptoms of GERD or heartburn is heartburn, nausea, regurgitation, pain in the chest or abdominal pain, anemia, difficulty swallowing or painful swallowing, respiratory problems, vomiting, and ulcers. If you're finding this information useful and helpful, hit the like and subscribe button and check out my website. Hitting the like and subscribe button allows other veterans and family members who are helping veterans to find this video and get their comments and questions about GERD and how to file for it answered. So what is GERD again? So this is just a, a better sort of graphic. This is from Hill and Ponton website. They are a uh, reputable accredited veteran law firm. GERD, what is it? Gastro gastroesophageal reflux disease it is a condition in which gastric acid comes up. GERD stomach, you can see there on the lower stomach image, it's the acid is flowing up instead of staying in that lower, you can see the lower esophageal sphincter muscle doesn't work properly. So the lower esophageal sphincter is open, allowing the acid to come back up. What happens in cases of GERD is that the lower esophageal sphincter muscle opens when it is not supposed to, allowing gastric acid and partially digested food to flow back up the esophagus. So what causes GERD? The esophagus, commonly called the food pipe, is a narrow muscular tube that is about nine and a half inches long. It connects the back of the mouth with the stomach. When you swallow food, muscles in the esophagus move the food toward the stomach. At the base of the esophagus is a band of muscle called the lower esophageal sphincter, or LES. I'm just gonna refer to it as LES or LES. And here on out, which opens and closes to allow the food and liquid to pass into the stomach, except for belching. This is the only time that the less is open to, is supposed to open. Once food and liquid have passed safely into the stomach, the stomach acids and enzyme in the stomach begin to break down the starch, proteins, and fats in the food, and the stomach has a lining tough enough to withstand the acid. What happens in the cases of GERD is that the Lower esophageal sphincter opens when it is not supposed to, namely after the enzymes and acid have started working on the content of the stomach. When this occurs, gastric acid and partially digested food flow back up. So that's what heartburn and all that kind of stuff is. The sensation is most commonly called heartburn, pyrosis, or acid reflux. The rating tables in Title 38 for GERD, it's not called GERD. It is located here under what is, I have box in here in red, 7346 hernia hi hiatal. I'm probably pronouncing that completely wrong, so I apologize if you know a better pro pronunciation of that. By all means, use it. Don't use what I have. But it is the most close to what GERD is. You know, and you can see here at the 60% rating, so it goes 10, 30, 60. Uh, and 10 has two or more of the symptoms of 30%. 30% is persistent reoccurrent epigastric distress with dysphagia, pyrosis, and regurgitation. So again, the food is coming up. And then 60 is symptoms of pain, vomiting, material weight loss. So again, that's the anemia. You're going to get that because of that. You're not getting the proper nutrition. Hematomasis or malina with the moderate anemia or other symptoms combination productive of severe impairment of health. So you remember the symptoms from a couple of slides before of what GERD is, anemia, pain, vomiting, you know, weight loss, uh, impairment of health, you know, pyrosis, regurgitation, all that. So then down here, again, this is also off Hill and Potton's website. Uh, GERD is specifically is typically rated under diagnostic code 7346, which is a rating for hiatal hernia or vice versa, the wording. Well, the VA rating for GERD may not mimic that of other conditions. That doesn't mean that you can't obtain veterans benefits for your medical condition. One can argue that this doesn't make 
does not make any sense. But while the particular regulation does not make it harder to obtain service connection for GERD, there are ways to get around this. And since there is not a specific GERD v via disability rating system, individuals may choose to obtain veteran disability compensation by providing direct or secondary service connection in their VA disability claim. So there's a lot of different things. You can get GERD, either direct service connected, or you can do it as a secondary to say, uh, sleep apnea or something. Secondary claims for, for GERD, it is well established that certain medications, lifestyle choices, and non-related physical disorders can contribute to GERD. Not only do some medications weaken the less, but some medications and outside factors can aggravate the already irritated esophageal lining. If you're taking medication for something else, it could potentially affect the lower esophageal sphincter muscle or less and cause GERD, which then you can throw in a secondary claim for because it is then related to your service-connected condition. Also lifestyle, certain lifestyle choices. Not, but we're not gonna worry about the certain lifestyle cho choices because it, we're looking mainly at what can cause it and how you can claim it. You want to focus on your medications and your other disabilities and how that could affect GERD. So what do you need? You obviously need a current diagnosis from an authorized medical professional. Numbers two and three are pretty similar. You need that in-service occurrence for a direct service-connected claim or you need that link to a service-connected claim or a service-connected disability already for a secondary one. And then you need an official letter from a medical personnel uh, medical professional, preferably a specialist, uh, or if you already have it in your medical records that you are suffering from this, you had multiple occurrences while you are in service, then you can throw those in and that's your medical nexus. Uh, you also need a statement in support of claim and or buddy letters that's telling the uh, VA how this is affecting your ability to have gainful employment and or have a normal social life. If you're constantly having or regurgitation or heartburn you might not be able to go out and be social it might also affect your ability to work or do certain occupations so you need to let the VA know about that if you have any questions or comments about filing for GERD or heartburn or whatever you want to call it please place them in the comment section or send me an email at contact at battlebuddyben.com if you like what you viewed hit that like and subscribe button and let others know about this video check out my website I have a lot of great links templates and information on it. The website is battlebuddyben.com. It is also on the screen. Keep working hard and good luck with your claims.